So we keep having attacks in different places in the world. And I keep asking myself, why? Well, I know why. And I'm going to I'm going to let you guys in on it. It's because deep in the heart of every single person there is a seed of darkness. We all have the potential for both light and darkness or love and hate. And the, the difference between the two isn't as cut and dry as you may think because light can just as easily turn from good to bad as easily as dark can turn from bad to good. Um, what I mean by that is that light is not always good. There are some people who project an absolute aura or absolute person personality of the ultimate good, but in, in reality, behind that facade, they are pure evil. And there are some people that seem bad to the people on the outside, but to people who know the person, they know that they're actually good, it's just sometimes they're portrayed in a bad light. But within every person is both light and darkness, and usually we try to keep those two forces balanced. Now, sorry, what I mean by that is we try and keep the light within us and the dark within us in a coexistent state where neither one really dominates the other because um, an imbalance of power, whether towards the light or the darkness, produces disharmony and produces chaos. And chaos breeds fear, it breeds pain, it breeds anger, it breeds the kind of climate we see in the world today. And to be honest, the, the climate of the world is only getting worse and worse every year. Um, you guys may have heard about the doomsday clock, um, the clock that the um, commission of nuclear scientists started back shortly after the atomic bomb was first invented that basically tells us how far away we are from doomsday. Well, it ended up, um, we've been at three minutes to midnight for years. I mean, seriously, decades. The closest we ever got was two minutes to midnight. And um, this last year, we went from three minutes to midnight to two minutes, 30 seconds. We're 30 seconds closer to doomsday because the world climate is still getting worse and worse. And once we hit midnight, that's the, that's the end as far as the doomsday clock is concerned. But we still have time. We still have time. To be honest, it's never been more important that we reach out to try and understand one another, communicate with one another, because words bridge gaps that actions never will. Words allow us to heal a person's soul, but they also allow us to hurt other people. Words are a weapon as well as a medicine, but we have to be wise and we have to be responsible with how we use our words. This is why cyberbullying and bullying in general is being brought to the forefront because so many people, especially young people, don't understand that your words really carry weight to some people. <coughs> and your comment that someone is fat or that someone is stupid may end up being the breaking point for their psyche where they can't take it anymore and they take it out on themselves. That is where we're at right now. We're at a point where we need to understand the importance of learning to coexist, learning to consider other feelings, other people's feelings before we speak, before we act, before we do something we regret. I myself have been the both the instigator and the victim in these kinds of cases 
and both times I understood the impact of words. Maybe not right away in the case of me being the instigator, but eventually I understood the impact of my words and I started to think about how to change my words to where I don't hurt others either intentionally or unintentionally. And it's not easy. It's not easy being being a person with that much weight behind the words that you say. And people in leadership especially should understand this. Um, when you're a leader and you say something even out of hand, it can have a huge impact on how people view you, how people listen to you again, or even just how people ignore you. And it is not a good thing at all to have your words misconstrued or your words come back to bite you in the ass. We need to be more mindful of how we act towards each other. We also need to be more mindful of how our hearts are. Where is your heart today? What are you carrying around that you really should just let go of? Personally, for me, I still carry around a lot of the hurt that I suffered as a child. I'm learning to let that go, but it is a slow process because so much of that hurt is so deeply rooted in my heart that I don't want to let it go. It feels like a comfort even if it hurts. And that's the reality of pain. Sometimes that's the only emotion we've ever felt for so long that when we finally feel something else and try and let go of the pain, it's too much. It's too soon. It's too fast. So we try and hold on. We try and keep a hold of it because it's so scary to let go. It's so scary to not have that pain anymore. And you have to just let it go. You have to let it go because it's going to eat you alive. You'll be dead before you die. You'll be dead before you stop breathing because your heart will be dead. Your soul will be dead. Your personality will fade. You'll be nothing more than a walking shell. That's the kind of world we live in where people allow themselves to become empty because they don't want to let go of the past, of the pain, of the anger, of the frustration. And that's where we are. But that's not where we had to stay. That's what I want to show you guys, that you don't have to stay there. You don't have to continue to wallow in your misery, in your pain, in your anguish, in your grudges against other people. You can learn to grow. You can learn to be more. That's the only thing I want from you, for you guys, is that you can be more. I know that a lot of you that are watching this video probably have pain of some kind. A lot of you probably also have it under control. They, you don't allow that to keep you hostage. But I know that there are probably at least a couple of you where that pain is so deeply rooted in you, that that pain is so deeply ingrained in your mindset, that don't let go of it at this point is an impossibility in your mind. Let me tell you something. It's not impossible. It's just difficult. It's very difficult. I understand but you can do it because I have been able to learn how to do it over time and you can do it too. You don't have to live in misery. You don't have to allow the world to make you bitter or cruel or inhumane. So many people are inhumane because they no longer feel compassion for other people. They no longer feel pain when others feel pain. When others suffer, they laugh. That's not the kind of world that we were supposed to be. That's not the kind of world that God intended to create. And I apologize if people are in... I, I'm sorry if people are insult, insulted or feel, um, feel angry because I brought in religion, but it's the truth. God created this world to be so much more than what it is. So much greater, so much brighter. We see the shadows in our everyday life. 
those shadows weren't meant to be there. We see the endless pain that people go through. That wasn't supposed to be part of the plan. You know what happened? We did Adam and Eve first, and then we continued the cycle. We hate. We hurt each other. We hold on to pain that we shouldn't hold on to. We allow the world to get worse. And you know what? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of living and saying, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Because it's not. The day that I stopped saying everything was fine was the day I started trying to change what wasn't good, what wasn't fine, what wasn't okay. Now I ask you to do the same. What are you holding on to? What are you doing today that is hurting you? That is not helping? That is not making an impact in a positive way on the world? What can you change in your life today that will make a difference tomorrow? That is what I want to know from you. If you want to, leave a comment down in the comments section. Let me know. What will you do right now, today? What will you do to change your impact for the better? Because I would love to hear from you what you plan on doing. And if you need help, if you need someone to talk to, as always, my Discord link is in the description. Come talk to me. Reach out. Don't keep it all in. But if it's so bad that you really need help, see a psychologist. See someone that can help you. Talk to your pastor if you go to a church. Do something because holding on to that pain is just going to make you miserable. Believe me, I know. And it has been too long that we have allowed this to continue. It has been too long that pain has been allowed to rule in the lives of so many. It's time for peace to reign in the hearts of many. It's time for peace to return to our world once again. Maybe not in the way that people would want. Maybe not to the world. Maybe not to everyone. But at least to you. You can choose peace or you can choose suffering. It's all a mindset up here. I know. It may not seem like it. It didn't seem like it to me. But it is. Thank you for watching. If this helped you any, in any particular way, please let me know. The comment section, as always, is open to all. It is open to suggestions. It is open to questions. It is open to criticism. But it is also open to reactions and to gratitude or thanks or whatever you want to say. Always, always open. The door will stay open as long as I am here. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a pleasant day. Take care of yourselves.